One of my favorite records of all time is not something that has ever been at the forefront of media or has ever had its time to shine in the mainstream, unless you count rate your music for some reason. And while I can understand that it's weird music, it just boggles my mind that Sweet Trip's Velocity Design Comfort hadn't really blown up at the time. The songwriting is incredible, the vocals are sweet, no pun intended. But what it comes down to is that Sweet Trip was ahead of their time. Maybe even too ahead of their time. So let's dive into what makes Velocity Design Comfort such a pivotal IDM, glitch pop, and even shoegaze album. In 1993, Sweet Trip was founded by producer and songwriter Robbie Burgos, as well as the lead vocalist, guitarist, and synth player Valerie Cooper, bass and drums being left to Viet Le. They had released more ambient-focused projects under the Darla Records label until Viet Le left. Their ambient works were a necessary precursor to their experimental, electronic swan song of an album, Velocity Design Comfort. It's because the long and winding passages wouldn't be as hypnotic and trance-like if it wasn't for their prior experience in the genre. This record, however, is so unbelievably ahead of its time that people in 2003 weren't even ready for it. There are some serious pop influences on here that would definitely be considered easy to access by today's standards. What makes it stand out is the wild and off-the-rails glitchy and distorted aspects that absorb all of Valerie's cute vocal melodies, just like on the track Fruitcakes and Cookies, for example. The detail that goes into each small drum hit and swell is so impeccable. If I had to sum up what making this album must have been like, it would be tedious and time consuming. I mean, on the exact same track, they transition into this insanely misty shoegaze passage that blows my mind every time I hear it. Break that, baby. Going through and making each individual sound would be every producer's nightmare. It shows that this band is dedicated to their craft and they're not going to give way for a single boring or torpid moment through its 1 hour and 13 minute runtime. This is the attention disorder dream project, forever changing and endlessly replayable. According to Robbie, the album is influenced by consumer culture, and it's easy to hear why just by listening to the instrumentals. The lyrics, on the other hand, implore the listener to run away from an ideal world and leave it all behind. The title, as he put it, is envisioned to be the slogan of a luxury car. And talk about an album cover, this is by far my favorite album cover of all time. It largely plays into the electronic sound that fills up the majority of the silence. It's like looking at an advertisement for time itself, or something like that. The strange building integrated onto the side is actually a real building called Habitat 67, and it's one of the most recognizable landmarks in all of Montreal, Canada. Why does it look like that? I don't know, they just felt like it. Robbie said that he aimed for Velocity Design Comfort to sound like flipping channels late at night and seeing and hearing all kinds of weird infomercials, which couldn't be more accurate when looking at a track like the opener, Tekka. <laughs> It's loud. It's trying to grab your attention and suck you in, just like some kind of brand controlling you with ads. Pulling from electronic influences like Aphex Twin while also taking from shoegaze bands like My Bloody Valentine or Slow Dive makes for something that is extremely far removed from anything of its time. I'll go as far as to say that a track like Sept sounds n absolutely nothing like any of its influences, but it fits perfectly snug with the rest of the songs. It never feels out of place. Even the guitar tones feel more glitchy and computer manipulated than, say, a My Bloody Valentine. The blend of analog and electronic has never been pulled off better than on this album. That's not to say that nobody has ever blended them before. I mean, Radiohead did it on Kid A, which even predates this one, while sounding nothing like Velocity Design Comfort. And that's because there's 
hundred ways to go about doing that. What Sweet Trip did when combining analog and digital just was exactly what I wanted to hear from it. This LP was futuristic when it came out, and to this day sounds just as futuristic without aging at all. It covers exactly what I personally love to hear from experimental music, and with each listen I can go back and discover something new to enjoy. When an album does that for me, it's a 10 out of 10 in my eyes. However, the Sweet Trip legacy doesn't die here. In 2009, Robbie and Valerie returned to make just another phenomenal album called You Will Never Know Why. Taking on more of a pop or indie rock songwriting direction certainly does not hinder their ability to make amazing music at all. Things might be slightly more linear, but never boring. Besides, there's still huge seven minute tracks on it, like acting, which is without a doubt one of my favorite songs of all time. And the bass lines on here front to back are relentlessly catchy and banging for no reason. Some of the band's best material turns up on this thing, and also some of their most popular. The focus they took makes total sense in the grand scheme of their career, and I'm glad that nowadays they've been getting a little more well-deserved recognition. They released their new album this year, A Tiny House and Secret Speeches, Polar Equals, after no word for 12 years, and it slapped. I don't know if I would go as head over heels for it compared to their previous two, but the opening track, Tiny Houses, is kind of one of their best songs. Overall, going back to Velocity Design Comfort, Sweet Trip created something that I'm sure I'll be revisiting for the rest of my life, whether it be because of the innovative or glitchy production, or the originality and dedication to craft. Thank you for watching.